this game slaps. And when I say slaps, I mean slaps. This game promised to be the difference in looter shooters. It promised to bring a refreshing take to the genre. And on the most part, it actually delivers. However, now that I've put in a decent amount of time, the honeymoon period is slowly fading. The hype is dying down and the game's problems are slowly coming to the surface. Things that were overlooked are now becoming more prominent and it's harder to ignore. Guys, I'm Pixel Sean, and welcome to my review of Outriders. For spoilers sake, I will only be showing you footage from the first few hours of my first playthrough using the Trickster. Be aware that this review is based on my opinion and that opinion is formed on my personal experience with the game. Full disclosure, I have not yet played all classes to the very end of the game either. And I'm also playing this on PC and have not tried this on consoles. Now for your convenience or for those who have a very very small attention span, here is my very quick TLDR review. The game is incredibly fun when everything is running as it should be. PC to PC multiplayer works very well. Crossplay, however, being in its beta, was still super buggy at the time of recording this. However, going to the developer's Twitter, apparently that has now been fixed. The variations in classes, abilities, skill trees, weapon upgrades, clothing, armor upgrades gives players a lot of freedom to cater their character to play and feel unique to them. You can have two players playing the same class and have completely different builds and completely different feeling characters. It is incredible. Please also be aware that at the time of the recording, the game has many bugs, which some have been addressed and others haven't. In terms of my recommendations, my rating would be to wait until the issues have been fixed. I cannot honestly recommend a game that costs 80 to 90 Australian dollars to people knowing how many bugs and corresponding fixes are needed in this game. I certainly have had a lot of fun in this game and it is very, very addictive. However, the issues are annoying to the point where they're becoming hard not to notice. I'd recommend to buy this game 100% but I would also suggest just maybe waiting a few weeks or a couple of months just for several patches to come out and fix the issues and balance out the game. Once the issues have been sorted, I have no doubt that this game will easily suck hundreds of hours of your life. The grinding, looting, upgrading and crafting system are all great. They're all easy to understand and I can see myself losing hundreds of hours once these issues have been resolved. So that's my TLDR portion of the review for those who don't have time or have a short attention span. If this is where you jump out of the video, I want to thank you again for watching. I hope you leave a like on the video and I hope the rest of your day goes well. For those who want a deeper dive and more of an explanation on these points and more, let's get into it. The Plot for most players, those getting into this game aren't really getting into it for the story. I for one didn't and I also started skipping the cutscenes. Not because I found them boring or poorly performed, but because it took me away from the extremely fun gameplay. The combat and everything this game has to offer was so fun that I actively skipped the story because I just wanted to get back into the action. That's how addictive it is. For those of you who want a quick summary of the plot, here you go. Our planet has been 360 no scoped by climate change. The world is collapsing, and the different governments have come together to fund one last attempt to preserve human life on an Earth-like planet called Enoch. After 83 years of travel, the first to step on Enoch are the Outriders. They were sent there first to scout out the new planet for any kind of dangers or threats. They found a fuckload of monsters. And they also found an anomaly in the form of a giant energy storm, which is deadly. There was a war between two major factions and the Outrider you play, after also being exposed to an energy storm, is placed under cryostasis for 31 years. Now, while you were in cryo, there was a huge civil war that took place and it is found that those who survived being exposed to that anomaly became what was known as Altered basically mutating you to have powers. Let's get into the powers. Wow. 
in this game, your quote unquote class is divided into four main powers, all of which have their own internal upgrades, new abilities, and multiple skill tree paths. This means that even if two players were to pick the same class, their builds can potentially be wildly different, making the character feel unique to the individual's playstyle. There are four main classes to choose from that are Pyro, Devastator, Technomancer, and Trickster. The Pyromancer, which is a medium range class, is obviously by the name someone who has the ability to manipulate fire. The Devastator, which is a close range class, you can encase yourself in concrete armor and this is basically the tank class. According to most players, this class is played the least and apparently it's the class that makes it to the end game the least. Technomancer is a long range class and this is basically for those who like playing support. You will get a range of turrets and guns that you can lay on the map and depending if you upgrade into these abilities, you can actually heal your team members even from a long distance. Very very useful to have a part of your multiplayer playthrough. Lastly, and the one that I went with is Trickster. This is basically your assassin class, which is a close range class that actually allows you to teleport around the map, slow down time, and basically manipulate time and space itself. So you might be thinking, why did I actually mention the range of the classes? Well, if you play in the style of your class, you are actually rewarded with health. There are no med kits in this game, and the only way to get health is either through loot or item upgrades that have health buffs on them, or you get out into the action and start playing. This is something that the game does extremely well. Let's move on to the combat. So the combat, when it's working, is the best thing about this game for me by far. It is incredibly fast paced, it's fluid, and the game forces you to move. If you picked a short range class, you're rewarded with health by getting up close and personal. Similarly, if you chose a Technomancer and you start picking people off at long range, you'll also be rewarded with health. This approach forces the player to be more aggressive in their playstyle. Instead of having low health and hiding and seeking cover like you might in other games, the player's actions are flipped on their head. You know that the only way to get health is to get out there and fight. You might be low on health, but the game forces you to engage, it forces you to kill for health, and it's made for some of the most nail-biting segments in my gaming life. You can see your screen fade as you get lower on health, but you're constantly trying to find enemies to knock off just so you can regain your footing. The game also has enemies throwing grenades at you, so even if you are hiding behind cover like a coward, the game will force you to get out of that cover. I often found myself looking for different enemy types just to prioritize getting my health back from smaller enemies rather than trying to take out the big heavy hitters. And it's at this moment where you realize the developers have done a fantastic job in the enemy variation and the gameplay mechanics. They force players to strategize, to assess the battlefield, and to push forward, and use all abilities, mods, and guns in your arsenal to get the win. This game isn't about hiding. There is a 50% regen of health, but to truly experience the game, you need to get out of the covers and into the fight. Now the difficulty of your fight can be set by different world tiers, and it's based on what tier you pick will determine not only how difficult the game can be, but also the drop rates of particular items. Higher tiers provide better items, but there's also an increased difficulty. If you pick a higher tier and die, you lose tier XP in order to unlock the next world tier. This provides a nice risk or reward scenario. Do you go with a higher tier and risk getting your ass handed to you for better drops, or do you take the safer route with lower chance of decent items? One issue I did have with the world tier system when I first started was how quickly the game got you to world tier 6. You can get there within a couple of hours, however at this point in the game, your gear, your armor, and your guns are just not up to the standard of world tier 6. It made the game feel like there was a sharp increase in difficulty when before it was somewhat of a nice consistent climb up. Once you do play more and do all the side missions as well, you will get better gear, better armor, better mods, 
and moving from World Tier 6 and above will not be an issue. Now going back to the genre of the game, this being a third person co-op RPG and looter shooter, it is clear that this game was designed to have co-op as the main focus. You definitely can play this game solo and it still is a bunch of fun if you do, however the real fun is playing with friends. You can have a maximum of 3 players in your party at any given time and at first I thought 3 was a little bit of an odd number to pick, however I can see why the devs made that decision. Even if everyone has a different class, that means that there's at least one class left out of the mix. This means that some enemies might be weak to that missing class, however, since that class isn't there, it's going to give the other three classes a harder time. If all classes were playable and were present in a team, it would severely reduce the complexity and interest in the game. It means that every single class would be able to defeat every single enemy, and that to me would just be boring. So purposely leaving at least one class off the table provides that extra level of difficulty and complexity. One of the most memorable fights I had in this game was on the front line of the trenches. It was me and two other players. The two other players were two Technomancers and I was the Trickster. There was an insane amount of enemies and I couldn't take cover. Enemies were swarming from all angles and if you did take cover, the enemies would just load your area with grenades forcing you to move. It took precision, teamwork and quick thinking and after completing that area, we all let out a sigh of relief. This game will give you multiple fights like this, where it may seem overwhelming but if you have leveled correctly, you have a decent build and everyone pulls their weight, you'll be able to scrape through and it is one of the best feelings. The combat is so rewarding and is one of the game's strongest attributes. Your abilities also have a large say in how you play the game. This isn't just another shooter with your abilities changing how your guns work. No, no. Your abilities are integral to the playstyle and determine how you tackle each wave of enemies thrown at you. Each individual class feels like a playthrough in and of itself. And to ignore playing as a certain class would be to ignore an aspect of the game entirely. They feel so different that once I finish with one class, I'll be going back to finish the other three. Now as I said before, I did main my trickster and I love the bubble that slows down time and then I expose the enemy's bones by using my temporal blade. Visually it's unique and gameplay wise it's so fun. The trickster in my opinion is probably the most fun class and it is extremely versatile. You're able to traverse the map very quickly, quicker than any other class actually by teleporting and then you can use a bubble that has multiple functions that I found out. Obviously it slows down time with everything that's inside the bubble, which greatly increases your window to attack, but it can also be used defensively. Any bullets or projectiles that are slowed right down in this bubble, you can actually see them and move out of their way. On top of that, it can also be used as a defensive wall. In one instance, my teammates were on one side of the map and I was on the other and they needed me to revive them, but there were so many enemies firing at us. As I ran over to them, I put a bubble up behind me, which acted as a defensive wall. This then brought me loads of time to revive my teammate and get us both out of the way. I found the trickster to be quite good at crowd control, especially early in the game. Where a group of enemies come at you all together, you can slow them all down and use your temporal bay to take them out at one hit. Those that were left over could just be bunched together in slow mode for your other teammates to clean up. The combat on the whole, if you haven't picked it up already, is extremely fun, albeit repetitive. The mission variety is something that needs to be worked on. All it is essentially is travel to one location, shoot either humans or monsters, pick up random item and bring it back. Unless I've missed a mission in there somewhere, I haven't come across any other missions that break away from this formula. However, this is not a negative to the game. This is a testimony to the game. Even though this game has the same mission format, it is still so addictive and fun to sink your teeth into. The gunplay and combat make doing the same thing over and over again fun. I understood that this was a process. I understand I'd be fighting monsters or humans or collecting a MacGuffin. But I looked forward to that. All thanks to the combat and the variety of enemies, monsters, varying locations and the wide variety of loot and upgrading. 
You, the player, understand that at the crux, you're doing the same thing. But there is enough variation with everything else going on around you that you either forget about it or you simply don't care because you're having too much of a good time. Let's get into the enemy variants. In the game, you're going to be coming across a variety of different enemies that can range from normal humans with guns, humans in armor, and other altered humans with their own abilities. Some might have an energy shield, others may have a gun that can almost one-shot you if you get in its way. On top of all that, as I said before, there are monsters in this game. And these all have different typings too. Some might be from a lava area so they can spit fire, some might be able to spit toxic poison, and some might even be electrically charged. Some enemies may even be able to resist your abilities. At one point in the game, I did get fairly reliant on teleporting behind enemies, throwing up a bubble, and using my temporal blade to go to town. Later in the game, as you come across some higher level enemies, they actually resisted those effects. So let me tell you, I felt like the Flash in Justice League when some big fucker turned around and started blasting my face with his machine gun at point blank range when he resisted my slow time ability. Each enemy and its corresponding ability pertains to its unique location, which made it a joy going around to different areas just to see the new monsters and new enemy types you'll encounter. There's enough variety here to keep it interesting and enough variety here to make you think on your feet. Let's move on to locations and performance. You will start each area in a new camp. In these areas, you will have to speak to people to upgrade your items, to buy, sell items, change appearances, side missions, etc. The game will take you to a variety of different locations in the world and they offer some of my most favorite looking locations in recent gaming history. Even on low settings, this game looks fantastic with minimal pop-ins, long draw distances and visually unique terrains. When I played this off stream, I never really experienced anything too drastic in terms of the game's performance, in major hubs or loading in for the first time, and heavy gunfights with lots of bullets and abilities going off, you could see the frame rate drop, however it quickly corrected itself. While streaming, I had to drop this down to low settings because of the game and the OBS used a decent amount of power for my PC, however that could just be my PC itself. This game is actually very potato friendly, so if you are concerned that you won't be able to play because you don't have a decent computer, please do look at the minimum setting requirements as you might be surprised what this game can actually run on. Now do be aware, I'm not sure if this is still a thing, however when I first started the game and loaded it in, it would start me on ultra high settings with 244 frames per second. The game was choking, so I had to drop this down to a medium setting and drop the frames down to a locked in 60 frames a second. I'm not sure who designed it so everyone started on Ultra, but I can see that this would cause a lot of crashes from people with lower end PCs before being able to even get in. Let's get into the looting. The looting in this game is extremely straightforward. You kill enemies, they drop items, and you can either decide to equip them right then and there, you can collect them and store them in your inventory, or disassemble them for their resources. The game gives you clear indications and stat comparisons in the game and a more in-depth comparison when you jump into your inventory menu. When equipping certain items, you'll be able to see firepower, armor, and health all changing to reflect your new outfit. Everything to do with looting is easy to understand, but also provides enough complexity that it will make even those who love looter shooters spend more time in their menus trying to find the best build for themselves. Item drops range from common all the way up to legendaries or legos as some people in the community call them. However, I found that legendaries didn't really offer too much more other than some mod slots. Different items may impact how your abilities work, providing more buffs to armor, more bullets, or even additional health buffs. So it's worth your time going into the menus and really looking at what your guns or your armor are offering you. Moving on to the upgrading. So by now at this point of the game, you would have picked your class and you'd be improving your build by picking up items as you're killing enemies around the maps. 
Now with each item and gun that you pick up, you can also upgrade them. If you are familiar with looter shooters, this is going to be second nature to you. However, you can pick up items, you can look at the stats and even compare them with the ones you currently have equipped. With this information, you can decide whether you want to replace the item with the newly found one or keep the one you currently have equipped. If you see an item out in the field and is not as good as the one that you have equipped, I would still recommend you pick it up because you can still sell it for the in-game currency to buy better items. Or you can disassemble the item right then and there for crafting materials or resources. To craft, you do need to speak to Sahidi at the camp and FYI, he will only be there once you pass a certain point in the first city zone. You can also increase the item's rarity, which will increase the firepower or armor. And with each upgrade to rarity, you will receive an additional mod slot. The mods are another layer to your build, allowing you to further customize weapons and armor, and they can even alter how some of your abilities work. There are some people who have made some incredible builds using mods, to the point where it might actually be overpowered. To increase the game's rarity in weapons, you'll need to look out for iron. If you want to increase the rarity for armor, you'll need to look out for leather. You can also raise the attributes of items, which is pretty straightforward, and this costs anomaly shards. And you can also swap weapon variants, which allows you to swap one variant from the same weapon to one that you're using. For example, you can change a pistol variant from standard to maybe a high caliber or even a burst fire or full auto. As long as you have the same weapon, you can swap out its variants. Now what we just spoke about in terms of upgrading and all that sort of stuff applies to the items that you pick up. So your clothing, your guns, your armor, etc. However, it goes even deeper than that. Each class that you've picked at the start of the game can actually be upgraded as well using the game's inbuilt skill trees. Each class gets their own skill tree. And this is another way to further customize your character's abilities or class, and it actually feeds into your personal playstyle. This all comes down to how you play and how you level using the skill trees. Through leveling, you can also get accolades, which help upgrade your trucks, cosmetics, gestures, dances too. Ugh. At least I realize how dumb this dance is. So you can see, this game actually goes fairly deep with the upgrading your character, which I said before, makes the character feel extremely unique to the individual. There is a lot of flexibility and it's something that this game does really, really well. Now that is a lot of positives that I've rattled off. However, this game definitely comes with negatives. If you were following the game on its first week or so, you would have seen the developers post multiple times a day about bugs. Some were small, some were game breaking. It has got better over time, however the bugs are still prominent. For me personally, the bugs I experienced were, my heads up display was not working. I couldn't see my mission and I couldn't see where my abilities were or anything on the screen. I had a weird hissing noise in the background of some of my gameplay, which I recorded, which is annoying and it required me to restart for it to go away. My mission pointer pointed me to a direction or path I couldn't take to get to my next point. There was clipping through walls, I had enemies popping in, and one of the worst ones I ever experienced in the game was not being able to aim, shoot, or use abilities. Why can't I shoot around the cover? Fuck. Ah, uh, dude, it's not letting me shoot. You have ammo? Got, yeah, ammo, 143. Dude, it's not even letting me aim. Alright, I generally don't have a lot of faith in you sometimes, I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck, it's not even letting me aim, dude. Now, those are the bugs that I personally experienced. However, I have heard of bugs where crossplay crashes the game, though apparently at the time of this recording, that has been fixed. I've also heard of people try to matchmake after completing the main campaign and it has resulted in all of their inventory being wiped. Imagine that, spending 20 to 30 hours looting, leveling, modding, upgrading only to have it all wiped because you wanted to matchmake with a random post campaign. As I'm also writing this, the developers have announced some nerfs to different classes that will be in the pipeline. 
Some classes are considered overpowered, most people name Trickster and Technomancer, while the Devastator remains lacking. The latest patch is designed to balance the classes a little more, but of course, people on the internet are not happy. The most common complaint online from people about this nerf is that it feels like the developers are nerfing three classes just to make up and balance it for the one poor class that hardly anyone picks. A lot of people online do state that even though they have played the Devastator class, it's one of the ones that lacks in cohesive builds and makes it to the end game the least. Devastator players have said they've upgraded this Devastator class to the best of their ability, however even just getting to the end game, they feel extremely weak in comparison to the other builds. Another con with the game is that this game is always online and I cannot stand when games do this. Some people just want to do a solo run, they're not interested in playing with other people. However, if the server goes down, so too does their single player game. I hate always online games, I feel like it's such a waste of time and it just annoys players more than what it's useful for. So, you've now made it to the end of the review. You've heard my many positives and you've heard my negatives. But is this game something I would recommend? Well. The game is incredibly fun when it works. The combat, the grind, and the looting systems are all extremely rewarding. There are a wide variety of environments and enemies that keep my interest throughout the entire game, and the multiplayer really escalates the game to new heights when it actually works. Enemies don't become sponges. Everything feels organic when you add extra players in. There's also a decent amount of in-game content and lots of fun side missions to do through your playtime. However, given how many bugs there are in the game, I cannot earnestly recommend this game at its current asking price. It is an expensive game and when you're paying that much, the consumers just deserve better. This is not the quality you would expect for the price you're paying. My recommendation would be to 100% get this game, but not yet. It is definitely a game that you should get at some point in time, but it is not ready yet. Outriders has got to be one of the most fun I've had in games in a long time. However, the bugs are so prominent that they will annoy you when playing. It will break your immersion and therefore your experience with the game. So 100% get this game, but not yet. There is room and potential for this game to be one of the best looter shooters on the market, but it's being held back by opening week bugs that are game breaking. So guys, that's my review. Let me know what you thought of Outriders down below, what bugs did you experience, and what has been your overall impressions of the game. I'd like to thank you again for watching this video if you made it this far, and if you did, I would really appreciate a like on the video, it very much helps out the channel. But that's it for the video today guys, I hope you're having a great day, I hope you're staying safe out there, but take care and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, bye.